I want you all to meet Lily. Lily is one of three part-time advisors for the Faculty of Social Sciences here at McMaster. If you've never seen her around campus, you've probably seen her on social media, or you might have even heard about her through friends. She's affectionate, loving, and she knows exactly what to do to make you feel better on a stressful day. Lily works for the Student Wellness Program, and Lily is also a dog. Hi everyone, my name is Wade Yassin, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the benefits of animal companionship. For most people, having a pet is simply a fun hobby, but the benefits we have from these relationships actually help us a lot more than we think. Pets don't come without their associated costs. They're expensive, they need a lot of time and attention, and they must always be cared for. Why is it that we spend so much time and energy caring for an unrelated, non-human animal when we should really be trying to maximize our own survival? Well, what you might not have considered is that animal companionship has adaptive benefits, and it has a very specific function, and that is to enhance our fitness. Now, having a high fitness doesn't necessarily mean that you're the strongest or the smartest. People with a high fitness has a, have a higher chance of finding a mate, reproducing, and passing their genes on to the next generation. But how can having a pet have anything to do with this process? Well, it turns out that pets have several ways in which they can enhance our fitness. The social support we receive from our pets actually improve our physiological health. One study compared the presence of a companion animal to the presence of a friend, both during and after a stressful task. Even though both of these relationships were rated positive, the presence of a dog was actually associated with more cardiovascular benefits. This was measured through cardiovascular changes like blood pressure and heart rate from baseline. We know that repeated and chronic stress can lead to cardiovascular diseases. Pets help us cope with stress. With all these benefits, um, pets actually provide more benefits than having a friend around. Similar findings are found through self-report measures of mood and anxiety. Pet owners are generally happier, they have a higher life satisfaction, and report much lower levels of loneliness than non-pet owners. After as little as a five minute session of petting or interacting with a dog, people in experience increased levels of hormones like endorphins, like dopamine, that are associated with happiness and positive mood. This is also accompanied with decreases in stress hormones like cortisol. Um, our animal companions also increase our social interactions with others. This is super important for people who have disabilities or people who um, have social, social problems maybe interacting with others. Pets force us to leave our homes, interact positively with others, and just make friends. A pet owner walking through a public park actually has more positive interactions with the public than a non-pet owner walking alone. This is directly increasing our chances of finding a mate and potentially reproducing. Our pets also directly increase our reproductive success. In one really interesting experiment, a handsome confederate approached 240 females at a public shopping mall. On half of these approaches, he was alone, and on the other half, he brought along his pet dog. The results were fascinating. The mere presence of a pet dog tripled the number of women who agreed <laughs> to go out with him later that night. We might be more attracted to pet owners because pet, uh, nurturing a pet and caring for an animal demonstrates parental ability we're more likely to invest in a pet owner because we know that they can transfer these skills and help us raise our offspring. They would make better parents. With all these benefits of having a pet and caring for an animal, um, it's no wonder that animal-assisted therapy programs are so widespread today. Whether it's used in nursing home or hospitals to help people feel less lonely and cope with um, medical problems, or maybe help a child cope with developmental problems that will help him better interact in social situations or maybe even help stressed out students on a campus just like ours uh, during exam season. So the next time you're walking through campus and you walk by Lily on your way to class, make sure you stop by and say hello, or maybe even add her on Facebook. It won't be long until you two become friends with benefits. Thank you.